Beginning of Unit 4. Unit 4 is all about an introduction to functions, and in this video we will be talking about learning target 4a, which is about what the difference between a function and a relation is. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to identify the domain and range for each relation and use a mapping diagram to determine if it is a function. You will also be able to use the vertical line test to determine whether a relation is a function as well. So we start this off, we do have some vocabulary terms to first start talking about. And our first one is, well, what a relation is. So a relation is a pairing of numbers from one set called the domain or the input to another set called the range or the output. So a relation is a way to pair something from an input to an output. We can represent a relation in multiple ways. One of the most common ways to represent a relation is using ordered pairs, where I have this x comma y, where I'm signifying that x is my domain or my input, and that y is my range or my output. A relation can also be represented using a mapping diagram. And a mapping diagram is where we have Instead of a ordered pair of x comma y, we change that ordered pair and we map them together using an arrow in the direction that they're connected. So I have my domain on the left, my range on the right, just like in an ordered pair. And the mapping diagram signifies that for every ordered pair that we have, we would have an arrow going from the domain element to the range element. So one important thing to notice here, and it's a really subtle difference, is that the arrow only points one direction. So the arrow only goes to the right. And the reason being behind that is because our x is our input and our range is our output. So I start with my input and I get out my output from there. So our mapping diagram just goes in one direction to the right the domain to the range. Okay, let's look at a couple examples for how we would create a mapping diagram. So example one says draw the mapping diagram for the relation represented by the following ordered pairs. So I have three ordered pairs here, one comma three, four comma negative two, and negative five or negative seven comma five. So we need to create our two columns. So I need my domain column and I need my range column. For each ordered pair, we're going to have one arrow connecting and representing that ordered pair. In our domain column is going to go all of our x values or all of our input values. So 1, 4, and negative 7. And I'm going to write them in increasing order. So I'll have negative 7, 1, and then 4. That will go on our domain side. In our range, we're going to have all of our y values or all of our outputs. So we'll have 3, negative 2, and 5. And again, I'm going to write them in increasing order. So negative 2, 3, and then 5 from there. Technically, you don't have to write them in an increasing order. I'm just doing it so our mapping diagram looks a little bit more exciting. From here, we now need to connect them using the coordinate pairs that they're coming from. So our first coordinate pair of 1 comma 3 tells me that from my domain of 1 I have an arrow connecting and pointing to the 3. For the second coordinate pair 4 comma negative 2 I'm starting on the domain column at 4 and I'm going point, having my arrow point up to negative 2 so it's okay if they have to go diagonal to reach there we just want to make sure we're going from the domain column then to the range column. Then the last coordinate pair we have is negative 7 comma 5 so we'll start at negative 7, and this will point down to positive 5. And that is what a mapping diagram would look like for those three coordinate pairs. So for however many coordinate pairs we have, that's the amount of arrows that we're going to have on our mapping diagram, just making sure that our arrows only go one direction. Hey, why don't you guys pause the video and try the second example on your own first, and then we'll check it together. Okay, let's check our second example here. So I'm gonna create my columns. I have my domain and my range column. Let's go through these ordered pairs. So I have three comma eight, negative one comma seven, and two comma eight. So I'm gonna start with all of my inputs. So my domains here are three, negative one, and two. 
Again, I'm gonna write them in increasing order. So I have negative one, two, and then three. Then for our ranges, we have eight, seven, and an eight again. Now anytime we have numbers that repeat within either the domain or repeat within the range, we only need to write them once. So I'm only gonna actually have two numbers written underneath my range column because I only have two distinct values. Eight gets used twice, which is fine, I, but I do not wanna write that twice because we're gonna end up losing information if we do. So we wanna condense this down as much as possible. So anytime we have numbers repeating within either the domain or if numbers repeat within the range like they did for this example with the two eights, we only need to write it once. Now let's go ahead and connect these. So our first coordinate pair is three comma eight. So I have an arrow starting at three, going to eight in the range. We have one from negative one to seven. And we also have one going from two to eight as well. And that's okay if we have two arrows pointing to the same range, that's gonna happen in some of these cases. Okay, hey, here's our third example. I'm gonna again have you guys pause the video and create the mapping diagram on your own first, and then we'll check it together for example three. Okay, let's check example three. I'm gonna start by just writing my domain and my range columns, and then we'll go ahead and read it. So we wanna draw the mapping diagram for the relation represented by the following ordered pairs. So we have four ordered pairs now. I have negative two comma three, zero comma four, one comma five, and zero comma seven. So let's find all of our inputs. So I have negative two, zero, one, and zero as my inputs. Again, I notice that, oh, I have two of them that are repeating, which is fine, but I only need to write the number once. So I'm gonna have negative two, I'll have zero, and then I'll have one, since the zero is repeating twice. Then for my outputs, we have three, four, five, and seven. So those are all distinct numbers. So I'm gonna write them all in increasing order, which actually is the order they came in. Three, four, five, and then seven. I can just fit it right there. When we go to draw this, I should have four arrows because I have four coordinate pairs. So the first one goes negative two to three. We go zero to four, one to five, and then zero down to seven. Those are three examples of some mapping diagrams that we can create if we're given or coordinate pairs or ordered pairs. Okay, let's move on and talk about what a function is. So a function is a special type of relation. So this is our next vocabulary word. So a function is a special type of relation in which each value of the domain is paired with exactly one value in the range. So for each value in the domain, I have exactly one value in the range that it goes to. What that means then on a mapping diagram is that only one arrow comes out of each domain value on a mapping diagram. But what is okay is if two arrows go to the same value in the range. So if I look back at these uh, examples two and example three, in example two, I'm gonna get another color to highlight here. In example two, we had two values coming into this range. That would fall into the second category where it says that it is okay if two arrows go into the same range. All we need to make sure of is that only one arrow is coming out of the domain. So in this example up here, example two is a function because each value of the domain is paired with exactly one value of the range. Now on this other point that we were looking at, where it says that only one arrow comes out of each domain, if I look at example three, this would be an issue then because zero goes to both four and zero also goes to seven. So in this example three, this was not a function because zero goes to two numbers. It goes to both four and seven. So I can only have each domain going to only one range. So because zero goes to both four and seven, then this would not be a function then, it would only be a relation. 
versus in example two, it's okay if they all go to the same range as long as each domain only has one arrow coming out of it. So example two is a function. Right, we're gonna practice this a little bit more. So in the next couple examples, we have given the mapping diagram, we wanna determine if the function or if the relation is a function or is not a function. So why don't you guys pause the video and do example on your own first, example four on your own first, and then we'll check it together. Okay, let's check example four. Consider the relation shown below in the mapping diagram. Is this relation a function or not a function? Explain. So in example four, this guy is gonna not be a function because of this five value in the domain is going to both three and to five down here. So this is not a function. And the way that we would justify that is since five goes to two, I'm gonna not say place, I'm gonna say two values in the range. So it goes to both three and five, which is an issue. Now, if we got rid of one of those two arrows, then we would be okay, and this would be a function because then every domain would only have one range. Okay, let's look at example, I'll leave it like that. Let's look at example five. Why don't you guys pause the video and try example five on your own first. Okay, let's check example five. So we have a mapping diagram, and our job is to determine if this relation is a function or not a function. So what I'm paying attention to is each element in the domain only having one arrow coming out of it, because that would mean that there's only one range that came from that domain. In this case, yes, zero goes to one place, one goes to one place, and six goes to one place as well. So yes, this is a function, and our reasoning is really the definition of what a function is. Each domain goes to only one range. And that's what makes a function. Okay, let's look at our last mapping diagram example. Why don't you guys pause the video again and try example six on your own first. Okay, in example six, we have to determine is this mapping diagram a function or not? What I'm gonna pay attention to is each element in the domain, making sure it only goes to one element in the range. So negative three goes to only one place, four goes to one place, and 13 goes to only one place as well. So yes, this is a function because each domain goes to one range. to only one range value. Now some of you might be wondering, well, is it a problem that four and 13 both go to three? That's a-okay. I can actually have every single value in the domain all go to one range value and that would still be a function because I just have to make sure that each domain only goes to one value. It doesn't matter if they're all the same value or if they're all different values. So example six is similar to example two from back up here where we had two and three both going to eight and this was still a function because as we point out in this second bullet point which we highlighted in blue it is okay if two arrows go to the same value in the range okay let's look at this from another perspective so we don't always have a mapping diagram or coordinate pairs that we're going to draw sometimes we could have a graph and so it'd be a lot of work if we had to take every graph and turn it into write out all the coordinate pairs or write out an entire mapping diagram. We should have a way that we can do this by looking at a graph. So another way to decide if a relation is a function is to look at the graph and use what we call the vertical line test. I'm gonna shorthand, um, we can shorthand vertical line test and I might end up using this later as V LT, so vertical line test, just because it's a lot to write out. Now you might be wondering, well, what's the vertical line test? So the vertical line test says that if any vertical line passes through more than one point of the graph, then the graph does not represent a function. So remember, a vertical line is a line that is going up or down, 
So you can kind of take your pencil or your pen, whatever you're writing with, and kind of slide it across a graph. And so if that pencil or pen touches more than one point at a time, then that would not be a function. So let's look at our first example. It says, consider the relation shown below. Oh, but it shouldn't say in the mapping diagram. <laughs> consider the relation shown below in the graph. Oops. So this is not a mapping diagram. I'm sorry, there's a typo on here. So consider the relation below shown in the graph. Is this relation a function or not a function? Explain. So what I'm gonna do is pretend, and you can even do it across the computer screen, is take your pen or your pencil and move it all the way across and see if it hits more than one point on the graph at a time. So I'm gonna draw a bunch of vertical lines on here. So this only hit once, I'm good. This hit once, if I draw one over here, this also hit once. No matter where I'm drawing this vertical line on here, it's only hitting the graph in one place. So that tells me that yes, this is a function because the graph passes the vertical line test. And so our explanation is referring back to the test we're using, which is the vertical line test. And in this case, since it passes the vertical line test, meaning that anywhere I draw a vertical line, the graph only intersects that line once, then yes, this is a function. Okay, hey, let's look at example eight. Again, I'm sorry that this typo is gonna continue to repeat. So these are not mapping diagrams, so let's cross that out. So consider the relation shown below in the graph. Is this relation a function or not a function? Explain. Well, what do you guys think? Is this a function or not a function? Okay, let's test it. So if I draw a bunch of vertical lines on here, if I draw one right here, it intersects it once. But if I draw it anywhere else, it's gonna be intersecting it twice. No matter where else I draw this vertical line, it's intersecting twice. This is an issue when this intersects twice and it only has to happen for one vertical line. Even if there's only one place where my vertical line intersects the graph more than once, then this is not a function because it fails the vertical line test. So our reasoning here would be that it fails that vertical line test. And it only has to fail it in one place. So although this happens at a lot of places on this graph, there is one place where it will pass, but the rest of the graph is failing, so the entire graph then is considered not a function. Okay, we have two more examples. Why don't you guys pause the video and do example nine on your own first, and then we'll check it together. Okay, let's check nine. So again, I'm sorry this typo is gonna keep repeating. So consider the relation shown below in the graph. Is this relation a function or not a function? Explain. Well, let's use the vertical line test. If I draw a vertical line here, intersects once, intersects once, intersects once, intersects once. If I take my pen, and I really like doing this either if you have this notes printed out for yourself or if you do it across the computer screen, you can see that it only intersects once for every place we have that vertical line. So yes, this guy is a function because it passes the vertical line test. So remember VLT is our vertical line test, just so that we don't have to write it out. But if you prefer to write it out, feel free to. Okay, we have one last example here in learning target 4A. So why don't you guys do example 10 on your own first, and then we'll check it together. Again, I'm sorry about the typo. So 10 says, consider the graph shown below, consider the relation shown below in the graph. Is this relation a function or not a function? So let's check it. If I draw a vertical line here, it only intersects once, so that's okay. If I draw a vertical line here, it's intersecting one, two, three times. Oh my goodness. If I draw another one over here, again, it's intersecting more than once, and this is an issue. As long as I can find one spot where a vertical line will intersect more than once, then this is not a function because the graph failed the vertical line test. Would be our reasoning. And that is the end of learning target 4A. So 4A was an introduction to what is the difference between a relation and then a function. So remember, a function is a special type of relation in which every element in the domain goes to exactly one element in the range. And we talked about how can we find that from a coordinate pair or a mapping diagram perspective, 
and then how can we use the vertical line test to help us determine when we're given a graph if that graph is a function or not a function.